What's up, everybody? How's it going? I want to talk about crafting for a minute. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I first got to the Blacksmith at Haven, I didn't know what to do with these schematics, with all these numbers and slots and the millions of materials that I had on hand already. You know, I was only like level three and I already had all this different metal and hides and all this other stuff. And I was like, uh, you know, what do I do with all this crap? So um, I get here to the Blacksmith and once I figured it out, I realized, wow, there's a lot of flexibility here. And they made, uh, they gave us a lot of stuff and kept it really simple. All right, so essentially you'll find schematics in the world through merchants and chests and whatever. All right, and uh, they can be for armor, armor upgrades, weapon, weapon upgrades, potions, yada, yada, yada. Different stuff. Okay, so here um, I have a schematic, luckily, for the sake of the video, for a set of armor and an upgrade. The arms are a, are a key. They're not armor, they're just the arms are an upgrade for a set of armor. And they'll usually go by a particular tier of armor, heavy, medium, light, so on and so forth. Okay, in this case... The top slot here, um, it says it requires seven materials. I don't see when I put any materials in that that I actually get a buff. And how you can tell is you look at the top right. It's, it'll show armor rating, then under that it shows empty. Now this is going to show the armor rating I'm going to get with these different materials when I put them in that slot. So what I'm going to go with here is the material that I have the most of. Maybe uh, eventually that primary slot will give me some kind of added bonus. But uh, for right now, it appears to be just the amount of stuff you need to make it. Now, the bottom slot is your actual buff. It's your actual bonus, okay? And depending upon what you put in it, well, what kind of slot is it? is it? It's a defense slot. You look down at the bottom left. It shows you what it'll give you if you put that particular material. Look at the top right. It shows you your final bonus. Now, the key here is, if you look at your schematics, is down at the bottom, if it says um, plus 1% of something for, say, your defense slot, and it says it requires four of them. When you put those four items in there, it's going to give you 4%. It's going to multiply by the number of items. So schematics that require more items are actually better because they're, they're going to give you an added bonus. They're going to multiply whatever percentage bonus it gives you by that number. Okay. So uh, here in this case, I, I liked the maximum health for my tank. Cast here, playing on Nightmare. It's definitely good for to be able to take an extra hit or two. Okay, so that's what I went with. And um, in the top slot, I just put anything in there. I didn't see it making much difference. So apparently that's just the materials you need to make it. And then any extra slots you have under that could be varied slots. So it's a good idea if you have several different schematics to go in and look at what slots are available and how you want that character to play. You know, pure defense, pure offense, you know, or whatever. Um, you, want it, you want elemental resistances and stuff. You know, you can go that way with it. So um, once you've made your item... On the PlayStation, you hit the square button. If you look down at the very bottom, it says rename, right? Now on the Xbox, I believe that would be the X button, the inside button. I don't know, but um, it'll show you down there at the bottom. And you can go in and rename all your gear and call it whatever you want. You know, super mail, super plate mail of awesome defensiveness or something. You know, just any, any ridiculous thing that you want to call it just for funds. And also to keep it from getting lost in your inventory. Should you be switching out gear and stuff like that, you know, that you don't accidentally put something into your junk pile. Um, that you don't want to lose. So you can custom name everything that you make, okay? And then uh, once you've done that, you can also make upgrades. Now, if you look down here, we have this thing called Scout Coat Arms, and that would be an upgrade for, I believe it's a medium set of armor, which seems to be geared towards the rogues. Seems light armor for mages, medium for rogues, and heavy for warriors. That seems to be the, the common MO here. All right, so we look at this, and we have two different kinds of slots. We have defense... And we have defense, all right, in both. So whatever materials we put into this, we'll go down to the very bottom and look at defense. So what's available to us? If we had several schematics, we might find one that had uh, an offense and a defense. And if that's what we wanted, we would, go, we would go with that schematic instead. Or you may like this schematic, but you want two different versions. Make two copies of it. Call them something different, right? And put in particular materials that, that gear it towards what you want. Now, these require a metal and they require a hide, okay? So that's what's required to make these gauntlets here, all right? And depending on upon what hide you put in there, if you look down at the defense slot, it shows you what you're going to get. So I want a Varric to have a little extra health and a little extra range defense. And so I can throw that on whatever set of armor he's wearing, okay? And we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, this, is just, uh, this is just a matter of making it, okay? And then we'll go over here to the weapon bench, and we'll see that the weapons are almost identical. Seems like you've got one primary slot to make the weapon, and then you'll have, um, at this point, it's just one slot. I, I can imagine that at much higher levels, you may have uh, three, four, even five slots to fill and really buff your weapon 
the specific way that you want it to. And you're probably going to have a lot of exotic materials to give you really good buffs too. But um, in this case, it looks like uh, that top number is just simply um, to add damage and just make the weapon in and, in and of itself. All right? And then the bottom number will give us an actual bonus. All right? You see over there on the top right under 78 DPS, when I first make it, that's when it's going to give me an AoE. And I believe that would probably be a base... Um, damage stat to go with any AoE attacks that I do, like for example, uh, um, Mighty Blow or something like that, being a warrior. Okay. And then this bottom slot, it says I get an offense slot, which makes sense. It's a weapon. All right. If you look down at the bottom left, all right, it says, uh, with, let's see, with this, I can get a chance to stagger. With this, I can get uh, plus two damage to guard. Uh, that's that 2% damage to guard. Okay. And then how many of them do I need to fill that slot? And if you look at the top right, if I need six materials, I'm going to get plus six attack. Plus six stagger. Okay, so just for example. All right, so uh, I think I'm actually going to go with stagger. Okay, so the higher the number in your slots, the better. Actually, even though it's going to require more materials, you're going to get a better bonus. Because the number of materials multiplies the bonus that you get in that slot. And the type of slot dictates what type of bonus you get based on the material you put into it. And I don't want that to sound real complicated. Simply, it's going to show you down at the bottom left what each of those things are going to do. And then you can get a summary at the top right. Okay? Now I'm going to call this the boss. Get it? Kind of a play on the Canari. The boss beard. Anyway, whatever. All right. And so this will be my sword here. Now I can go down here and I can look at upgrades also. When it says things like blades and grips and stuff like that, that's stuff that you can add to a particular kind of weapon. And it'll show you down at the bottom left, you know, staff blade schematic. And what this is, is this will add some kind of either offense or buff to your mage's staff um, to do whatever. So I look at this schematic. I have two schematics here with my staff, lucky for me. So I can look between both at the mat materials I have available, the kind of slots this upgrade is going to give me, and um, what the bonus is going to be if it's something that doesn't fit my mage at all. Like say it's just nothing but fire buff, but my, my mage is an ice mage. Using an ice staff, for example, I probably wouldn't want to go with fire. I'd want to go with ice-based stuff, just for example. And so you can go look. Anyway, here it says uh, flanking damage. That'd be good if um, it was my controlled character. But here we have just critical damage and, uh, you know, whichever. I don't know. Maybe if I can keep my mage away from the fight and draw attention away, then he will get... Uh, basically, that's damage bonus when attacking an enemy anywhere from uh, besides from the front, for example. Honestly, that would be much better for a controlled character. But, uh, there we go. All right, so I can take that, and I can put it on uh, my character's staff, and then if I am controlling my character, I can go get behind the enemy and try to stay out of the way and hopefully not have their attention all the time. All right, we see uh, upgrades for Bianca and, and all kinds of stuff. So you can make those, and then what you do is you come over here, and you have... Um, a way to modify weapons and armor. Now here, for the weapons, that's a staff upgrade we just made. Once I've decided exactly what buffs I want to put on a particular staff, remember I might want to keep those buffs in line with what the staff actually does and what my mage is doing, all right, then I take that and um, right here, I just simply add that and it shows you a summary at the top right of what it's going to give us, okay? And that's all the stats, top right of what this staff is going to do for me. Extra strength, extra flanking damage bonus, extra cunning and magic that were already built in, and it's all added in there, right? And then armor's the same way. So here I fumbled around just a little bit, but I eventually found um, Varric and his set of armor. Okay, here we go. And then these are what I have. I have one that I made called Still See the Hair just playing around. <laughs> Get it, Chester? Anyway. All right, so I can take that, and I look at the top right exactly what bonuses I want to give him, all right? And then I just add that to his armor, and that's good. Now I can come in here and take it off just as easily and switch it out with another upgrade. Say, once you become familiar with the game and you know one mission you're going to need, say, a lot of ice defense, another mission you're going to need a lot of lightning defense or range defense or something, well, you can gear particular upgrades for that particular thing and have them on hand and then go to a blacksmith bench and switch them out, okay? If that makes sense. 
And that's it. That is uh, basic crafting 101, what to do with the schematics and how to figure out how to gear them towards your character. I hope this helped. Hope it wasn't uh, too babbling. All right. Appreciate you watching. And if you want to catch up on more Inquisition, hit the top box. For all my videos, hit the bottom box. If you want to subscribe, smash on that button right there over my head. Really appreciate it. Remember to comment and like and all that good stuff. I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.